How do we follow up Bon Jovi and Southside Johnny? Let's bring out a writer. Always fires up the crowd. <laughs> uh, Peter Benchley wrote a lot of great books, including one of the most famous novels of the entire 20th century, a cultural happening like no other, dun dun dun, Jaws. Which is interesting to talk about as we're just very close to the beach over here. Um, Peter wrote the first draft of Jaws in a furnace repair shop in Pennington, New Jersey. But, but ironically, uh, when Peter created a monster out of a shark, it made him and the rest of us want to know the monster better. That's what the best stories do. Peter's novel triggered our current understanding and desire to preserve sharks and marine life, interestingly enough, more perhaps than any other single happening. Peter's gripping tale, which scared the shit out of all of us, <laughs> led him, along with his wife, Wendy, who's here tonight with us, to make marine conservation their life's work, and we're all the better for it. There's no Shark Week without Peter Benchley. Ocean advocacy would be all the poor. And so in the end, Peter did what all storytellers dream about doing. He entertained us, he enlightened us, and he fundamentally changed the way we saw the world. Let's watch the clip. Peter Benchley was a celebrated author, screenwriter, and ocean activist. After graduating from Harvard, Peter worked as a journalist and speechwriter for President Lyndon B. Johnson. In 1970, he moved to Pennington, New Jersey with his family. It was there that he wrote the novel Jaws, which became a huge bestseller. He then co-wrote the screenplay for the feature film Jaws, directed by Steven Spielberg. Released in 1975, Jaws made $470 million worldwide, the first official summer blockbuster. Peter followed up his amazing debut with novels, TV, film, and nonfiction collections. A passionate conservationist, he served as spokesperson for the Environmental Defense Fund. He was also one of the founding board members of the Bermuda Underwater Exploration Institute. Peter died in 2006 at the age of 65. In light of his lifelong record of conservation and education, the Peter Benchley Ocean Awards were created in his honor. We are proud to induct Peter in the Hall of Fame for his contributions to the Garden State. Please welcome Peter's wife, uh, oceanographer, environmentalist, uh, Wendy Benchley. Wow. <laughs> That's a rendition of the Jaws theme I haven't heard. <laughs> anyway, thank you, New Jersey Hall of Fame, for this absolutely wonderful honor for Peter. And thank you, Harlan, for your very astute comments about Peter. He, he loved his life of writing and his ocean adventures, and his love of the ocean brought our family into ocean adventures, too, and my daughter, Tracy, and son, Clay, are here tonight. Um, Peter was really wanted to get people to understand the ocean through his writing and his films. He was a speechwriter for President Johnson. And when Johnson decided not to run, uh, Peter decided to try freelance writing. But he was a smart man. In his back pocket, he had an idea always for a novel about a shark that hung around a New England town and caused a little bit of havoc. And I'll have to confess that all those years ago, I looked at Peter and I said, honey, you know, I don't, I don't think a book about a shark makes much <laughs> sense. I, I, I'd think of something else <laughs> to do. And um, thank heavens he, he didn't listen to me. And he went right to that furnace repair shop in Pennington, New Jersey, and sat down and wrote Jaws. And the repair shop was actually better for him, uh, a better atmosphere for him than our house with, with two sort of chaotic toddlers um, whipping around all the time. He was extraordinarily lucky because Universal saw the power of his book and they had the foresight to hire that genius director, Steven Spielberg. 
to make the movie. And um, the, the movie really changed our life forever. Uh, we both went off into ocean adventures, Peter especially. He did documentaries. I, I just remember one quick documentary I want to tell you about because he, uh, they, the sharks were not coming close enough to him. So one of the cameramen said, ah, I've got a good idea. We'll just get some dead fish, some dead smelly fish, and we'll put them in your wetsuit, and then you just swim right out into the middle of the ocean, and the sharks will come around and we'll get a great shot. And uh, Peter allowed us how he was not going to do that. So he learned uh, what to do and what not to do. But his very first adventure with sharks was right after Jaws when the ABC American Sportsman called him and said, okay, big fella, you've written this book about a shark. Would you like to go down to South Australia to Dangerous Reef and do some cage diving with the Great Whites? Mm -hmm. That is an offer you cannot refuse. So Peter and I went down to South Australia, um, and this was, uh, this was in the late 70s. So it was quite primitive. Uh, on the stern of the boat, they had hung, I hate to tell you, but the a half of a horse hanging up there as bait for the sharks. It was really smelly and gross and miserable. But uh, the sharks actually did come in for that half a horse. The, the cages were still experimental. Uh, they were attached to the stern of the boat by just a nice thin rope. So if the shark got angry and bit the rope or got tangled up, you know, Peter would be cast adrift on the ocean. However, Everything was fine. He had a good dive. He saw beautiful, beautiful, one gorgeous female, 16, 17 foot, great white shark. And he came up from that dive and was absolutely inspired and hooked by how beautiful the creature was. Um, I, I've seen great whites also in, in cages. I'm in a cage. Um, and, uh, and they move through the water with such grace and um, power that you just can, your, your breath is taken away from them. So after that wonderful experience, Peter uh, went out into the ocean. He did expeditions with the National Geographic and other groups. And he really wanted to educate people about what was going on in the ocean. Uh, one of the very nice legacies, as Harlan was talking about Jaws, is that he got hundreds and hundreds of letters from people who wanted to be like Hooper in the movie. They wanted to be marine biologists. They thought that Jaws was so exciting and the ocean was exciting and they got out there and wanted to work for it. So all these years later, what is it? 40, almost 45, 50, 45 years later, it's wonderful that we now know so much more about sharks. We know they are the tigers of the seas. They are absolutely essential to the health of the ocean, and the health of the ocean is essential to humanity because we cannot survive with a healthy ocean. And I thank you very much. New Jersey Hall of Fame for inducting Peter. Thank you.